Ooh, this bar is not pleasant. Okay, best fishing video cameras for pictures and video. Part of what the modern technology has given us is the ability to eliminate multiple devices. Think about how many devices your cell phone has replaced. It's replaced your telephone, it's replaced your stereo, it's replaced your VCR in a lot of ways. Data planner, in other words, what I'm doing here, this is old school. I like pencil and paper because I think like a writer. Well, what else has it replaced? It's replaced your record player, it's replaced your CD player, it replaced your tape player, your tape deck. Uh, again, your stereo, your radio, and for most people it's replaced their computers because most people don't need a computer, a full desktop computer like I have. I need it because I'm processing a lot of video and there's no way that the little cell phones and a lot of people it's replaced their cameras, it's replaced their camcorders. That same revolution that has happened in cell phones is also happening in cameras, right? In years past, you would have to have if let's say you're on a movie shoot or something, you would have to have like at least three different types of cameras. You'd have to have a point and you'd have to have a actual film camera, single stills camera to get pictures. You know, snap, 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 you get pictures, right? And then you'd have to have a camcorder to get news feed, documentaries, things like that. You would have to have a true cinema camera for your movies and your films. Well now all that's been compressed into one device. You can shoot stills with one camera, hit another button and it starts rolling video. Put your neutral density filter on, change out a lens and adjust the aperture and stuff. Shoot in what they call V-log. This camera can't do. Now you have a cinema camera. Really when it comes to the all best all around hybrid camera that just shoots stills, shoots video, and can give you some nice cinematic colors and stuff straight out of the camera. But I'd say probably Fuji. You know, I, now I haven't used any of these cameras I'm talking about, but just after doing lots of reading and after watching tons of people who've tried these cameras and who are using them to just the nth degree that I plan to once I upgrade, the X-H1, the X-T2, and even the cheaper option of the X-T20 just seems like an incredibly amazing camera. They're totally mirrorless, and they use the same size chip that's in this camera. But if you're if you're if you're someone who has an eye for the photography, where you want to shoot a lot of stills, and you've moved up from just wanting to use your cell phone to take your pictures, you know you can get a Fuji XT20, okay, and you can shoot video with that. And it's not it's not a video camera, but but at the same time, the Fuji XH1 they does. The Fuji X-H1 is sort of Fuji's answer to, say, the Panasonic GH series. A lot of what's driving these new sorts of camera technologies have been photographers who are coming over to do video for the first time. Because let's say you're a photographer and you're shooting weddings, right? Well, all of a sudden now, they, they want to watch a video. They want to watch a movie about their own wedding, as if it were on like Discovery Channel or something. Well now all of a sudden these photographers are having to learn video. Well, you just when what Panasonic and Fuji and Canon and even Nikon, all these companies are adding more and more video capability to their cameras. That's opened up a whole new world for any kind of content creator because now you have one device that can do at least four different jobs. It can act as a camcorder, it can act as a cinema camera, stills camera, and it can process audio. So that's like four different jobs. That, that, that's a whole film crew, guys. For me, I'm more, give me the video and the cinematic capability. I'd imagine most of you are interested in the video. Now what I like to do is I'll just shoot the video, and instead of, and, I, and as I'm shooting my B-roll, the B-roll, I'll just lift a single frame out of that to do my thumbnail. It's just much easier than trying to take a dedicated photo because I'm not a oh, B-roll is anything that's not A-roll. This is A-roll, just me talking to you right now. B-roll is me, hey, I'm gonna go get some shots of the flowers, shots of the trees, insert B-roll, shots of flowers and trees. Um, shots of the boat, you know, uh, whatever. And I'm either have music over that or I'm talking over that or I'm whatever, and that's B-roll. Well, a lot of times the B-roll makes a good thumbnail. 
and when you're shooting video, I'm shooting at 25 frames a second. That literally means this camera is shooting 25 still shots every second, right? And it's recording audio and the computer automatically syncs the two together as more neighbors. Well, at least he's having fun. <laughs> All these cameras are good for stills and video. Now for cinema, you know, yeah, you're gonna have to get stick more to your say your Panasonics and your Black Magics and your Z cams and your uh, but but Fuji does a good job. I mean Fuji the colors straight out of the camera on the Fuji are like just so all these cameras do these things very very well even this camera that I absolutely hate you guys keep watching the video so it must be doing something right all these cameras have limitations you're gonna have to either find workarounds or find ways to live with it and uh, just go with that and then I'll talk to you later so next time low light